Hi everyone. In this short video, we're going to be looking at the occipital bone, which is located here at the back and the base of the skull. Uh, the first structure we're going to label is the inion process. Uh, you can probably feel your inion process. It's right here. Uh, so if you put your hand on the back of your skull, you may feel a little bump uh, in the middle of the, the back of your skull there. That is the inion process. And it's actually on a wider structure, a line called the superior nuchal line. Superior nuchal line. Uh, below it, we have the inferior nuchal line. And then again, here is the inion process. Uh, those are really the three structures that you can see from the posterior view. The rest of the occipital bone structures will actually see from below. <clears throat> and I've actually left the C1 uh, vertebra here so you can see its relationship to the occipital bone. Uh, we can go ahead and fade that a little bit. Um, and so you can see the foramen magnum. It is a very large foramen at the base of the skull where your spinal cord actually um, starts as it tapers off from your medulla oblongata and exits the skull. So your spinal cord actually exits in this area here. Um, on either side of that, we have these two fairly large uh, condyles that articulate with the C1 vertebra. I'm going to go ahead and remove the C1 vertebra. It's also called atlas. I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And you can see the two large articular surfaces um, that articulate with that vertebra. So if you were to nod your head up and down, the movement would be occurring between these two structures and uh, your atlas vertebra. These two structures' names are occipital condyles. So you have a left and a right occipital condyle. In front of these two structures, we have something called your basilar portion and your basilar portion is just this region right here. It's the portion of the occipital bone anterior to the occipital condyles. Basilar portion. Um, it's, this next structure, unfortunately, is not very easy to see. Um, on a real skull, oftentimes, it's hard to see as well. Sometimes you actually have to rub your finger here, and you may catch a little a little protuberance right there, a little tubercle. And that is called your pharyngeal tubercle. It's just dead center in the middle of your basilar portion, pharyngeal tubercle. Now, fortunately, we can remove your mandible and we can see pretty clearly these two foramina. So we have a right or, or rather canal, rather, sorry. So you have a right hypoglossal canal and you have a left hypoglossal canal. Just superior uh, to your occipital condyles. If you were looking at this on a real skull, probably the best view, just like we're doing here, would be to look through uh, where you would expect the mouth to be. And you can see these two <clears throat> structures here called your hypoglossal canal. Let's see if we can see those from a top view. I haven't tried this before uh, starting this video, but let's take a look. Let's hide the parietal bones and the occipital. Oh, we can't hide the occipital bone. Unfortunately, we can't hide the superior portion only, but you can still kind of see. Let's verify. Yep. Right there, you can see the hypoglossal canal um, from a superior view, actually. So if you picture your brain stem sitting in this little pocket here, and then your spinal cord leaving the frame and magnum right here, you can imagine how one of the cranial nerves might actually 
leave your brainstem and exit that canal. And that cranial nerve is called cranial nerve 12, hypoglossal nerve. That nerve exits the hypoglossal canals and actually innervates muscles that um, allow you to stick your tongue out. And if you just activate only the right muscle, you would stick your tongue out and deviate it to the left. And if you act activated only the left muscle, you would stick your tongue out and it would deviate to the right. And if you activate them both, your tongue would just stick straight out. And that is it. That is the occipital bone.